Hi guys, welcome back to another installment of Professor Charles S. And let's talk about it. I went to go see Annabelle Comes Home yesterday. Now, I I could have did it with a different name. It should have just been called Home Alone with Annabelle, to be honest with you. That's what the movie kind of gave you that idea. So let's talk about it. So the movie deals with Ed and Lorraine's daughter is Judy. Yes, Judy will be the, the character, the main character of this film. But it starts off, which I had a little issue with at first. I was like, man, I hope this doesn't like really mess it up. Because sometimes when you do movies and they don't go like in, in a sequential order, sometimes it can be confusing. But it did not confuse us because if you've seen Annabelle 1, it kind of deals with the three college students that had this demonic doll. And the Warrens taking the doll with them. and it starts off on a creepy like tip okay <laughs> like it's not super scary so like if anyone like i mean you probably get jumps if you're like really not big on like if you're really not big on horror movies you might get jumps but me i've kind of come immune to it <laughs> like a superhero so um when they get annabelle the warrens take the dial back to their home and you know they're known for keeping all these different artifacts that have something connected to it but annabelle is kind of like the beacon of the lighthouse like annabelle wherever annabelle goes there are different spirits coming up and everything um but with annabelle's case the warrens realize that when something happens to their car and pretty much ed warren's out there working on the car <laughs> and the rain is in the car literally like she's in the car and when she sees what's going on, that there's a spirit in the car, she's like, oh, I like your dial. And I'm like, uh-oh. I'm like, this ain't good. And then on top of that is a cemetery, not, like, too far from there. And in the cemetery, you see all the different apparitions or spirits looking literally at Lorraine. And, you know, the husband can't see them. Lorraine can see these things, but he can't. So then, after that, this takes place some years after I want to say 10 years after, if not, correct me, guys. But we see Judy, which is just like her mother. Judy can see spirits. She sees this priest. Um, and, you know, with Judy being socially awkward, we can see that she is because the kids pick on her because of her parents, what they do as these demonologists. And that could be, depending on the type of job you have <clears throat> and you have a kid, that can also play a factor with having kids because that was something I saw. Like, man, like, you know, Judy has to experience all this backlash. <clears throat> People probably don't want to be friends with her because of the controversy of these of her parents' occupation. Um, and we saw that with Judy. We saw that with Anthony Rios, you know, trying to, like, make fun of Judy and, like, the one you're like, I can't play with you anymore, Judy. And I'm just like, man. But you can see that Judy could see also spirits like her mother. Like, she saw the priest that used to accompany her father and mother. But he wasn't, he didn't seem like he was, like, evil or anything. You know what I'm saying? It seemed like he was trying to let Judy know, like, I'm watching you type of thing. It's not like I want to attack you. I want to harm you. Any of that. And that's what I got from father. I was like, then, you know, when you saw the statue head, it's like, aha, uh -huh, yep. Yep, yep, yep. He's just watching over his, his school, the Catholic school that he owned. It's like, okay, you know. Um, but also, we're introduced to other characters. Mary Allen. Mary Ellen it's pretty much the babysitter. So that's why I said this could have this been called Annabelle Home Alone. I, I just think that's what it should have been called. <laughs> um, But basically, Mary Ellen is going to be looking after Judy when her parents go out of town to do something else. So with Mary Ellen, we see this, like, you know, young girl, um, kind of, you know, laid back type of feel with her. But also you see she really cares about Judy and, you know, she stands up for Judy. You know what I'm saying? She tells, you know, Anthony, hey, chill out. You're not, you know, and Anthony said, don't make me tell your, you know, your family and stuff like that. Um, and that was really interesting, like, you know, with Judy not having the friends that she has, she has someone like a big sister. That's how, I think that's how I felt about Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen was like the big sister to Judy. Even though she wasn't related to her, you felt that type of connection. It's like, 
She tried to bond with her. She even surprised her for her birthday, you know, made her a cake and everything, bought pizza, you know. So it was more like big sister, little sister type of relationship between the two. But then comes her friend, which is probably the most annoying thing about this freaking movie. Not completely. I had a love-hate relationship with Daniela Rios. So Daniela is pretty much Mary Ellen's friend. She's a little bit more adventurous, you know what I'm saying? Um, And we see that in the film that she's more adventurous than her friend. And you can see that when she, you know, sneaks into the Warren's place where Annabelle's at. And, you know, when you think about it, Annabelle's the most dangerous one. Like, you go in their room with all these items that have all these different possessed items in the room, and they say it on the thing, like, uh, you may not want to open this. Oh, Daniela, psh, oh, she just about this life. So when Daniela goes into that room, finding the key and everything, um, yeah, she unleashed Annabelle. Mm-hmm. Yep, Annabelle had her head up and it up against the glass. Um, stuff started to happen in that room. Um, but the, the I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the cons of this. Um, no, not cons, maybe the pros. The pros with this film were really interesting. Uh, we saw the other spirits. We saw the samurai spirit. I thought the samurai spirit was gonna be a little bit more spookier. I don't know, man. Maybe maybe it was just the anticipation. Like when you see him in the hallway and he turns his head. You know, he looks, you know, and I'm just like, but then you see a flashback of what the samurai was. Samurai was just killing people left and right, pretty much. <laughs> um, You know, he wasn't the spookiest one. I think the one was the one with the coins. The one with the coins was probably the spookiest one because every time you just saw coins everywhere, and then on top of that, you saw the other spirits that paid their toll because that's what the coin spirit was. It was like, you know, <laughs> almost jumped, you know what I'm saying, with that scene. I think the most scariest part is when Animal became the goat demonic thing. I was just like, all right, yep, yep, yep. And I thought for sure that either Daniela was going to die or Mary Ellen was going to die. Um, and I was really interested that neither one of them died. And there was also another person in this film I forgot to mention, Bob. Bob is like this brave guy, has a thing for Mary Allen pretty much, and we see that, you know, he serenades her with singing, you know, by the window. I was like, oh, how romantic. Um, we see him off and on throughout this film, also caring about Judy as well, um, and also having a big crush on Mary Ellen, because we see, you know, Daniela knows, like, <laughs> Bob has a crush on her. Even the pizza guy was like, hello, so Bob, that's you? <laughs> it's funny, because sometimes you like someone, Everyone else knows, and Bob is, you know, the piece of man's like, so Bob, is that you, bro? And I'm like, yo, like, don't be out here, like, crushing my man's crushing. He's like, no, we, we're just friends, you know, we'll see how that goes. But we see Bob fighting the werewolf spirit, which I thought was very courageous with Judy. He broke his freaking guitar. Um, He stayed there when things got rough. I almost felt that he was going to get killed in this movie. Like, literally, when the chicken got out the coop, I was like, oh, no, the chicken got out the freaking coop. And I know that chicken didn't return. <laughs> he was looking like, what the? But like I said, this movie, it was very interesting what they did with it. Um, I wish, uh, how can I put it? I wish we would have learned a little bit more about Bob what happens to him at the end and Daniela? I mean, we did, but it wasn't like how I wanted it to be. Um, but we did see that they had to put Annabelle back because Annabelle was causing all types of chaos. We saw the wedding spirit. I thought the wedding spirit had Daniela Rios for a minute because the wedding spirit was like really gruesome. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, and you know, and throughout this film, we see the different spirits play with them. Um, even, um, Annabelle's little girl spirit from Annabelle 2. Um, but like I said, this movie was better than Annabelle 1, personally. This was up there with Annabelle 3. Like, I actually like Annabelle 3 and I like Annabelle 2. I didn't really like Annabelle 1. I just felt that I didn't really like what they did with the movie. I mean, you had a few jumps here and there in that one. But, I mean, in the third one... 
we learned that Annabelle is the most dangerous one. I mean, even in the in the, before the movie starts, it just says like, look, Annabelle's the most dangerous one in that freaking room. <laughs> so I was like, oh my god, like, and it's not a human spirit. They already said that too. So you you get the anticipation like. <laughs> Annabelle about to cause all type of chaos amongst the other spirits in that room. And also, we see that Daniela is grieving over her father. It was a reason why she wanted to go to that room. And it, it started dying on me. I said, why is she so obsessed with the Warrens' home? You know, especially with the supernatural. And, you know, she sees her father. They play the piano together. Like, oh. But then you start to see, like, when Annabelle takes control of her father, I hate you. You're the reason why I'm dead. And to find out that Daniela Rios killed her father and everything. So I was like, oh, okay, now this makes sense. But one thing I really loved about this film was the freaking ending. The ending was solid. It was solid for a trilogy for a horror movie we see Judy accept, accepting that not all spirits are bad because the priest was the reason she found Annabelle. The spirit of the father that used to work with her mother and father was the, the one, hey, say, hey, look, follow me. And, you know, Mary Allen was still kind of scared because she wasn't familiar with this. You know what I'm saying? She was hearing the rumors in the town and stuff um, and everything. And poor Daniela almost thought that she had almost died because the way the spirit took a hold of her uh, body and everything. Um, I'm glad Bob survived. And that was something that I was kind of confused at first. I'm like, is Bob alive and all? But I got to say, um, I love that, you know, Judy ended up having friends at the end because despite her family having this difficult job or controversial job, you start to see everybody starting to wanting to be friends with her again. Uh, Mary Allen comes, Bob comes, Daniela comes to her birthday. Um, and we also see that, excuse me, that uh, the history of how uh, Ed met Lorraine, pretty much Lorraine tells the story to Daniela and her father speaks to her and everything. So everything's going to be all right. It's okay and everything. And she gets to lock it from the Warren's room, I guess, as like a, a token of appreciation. Uh, we also see uh, Bob turning up to the birthday party, you know, because uh, Mary Ellen was like, hey, is it okay if my boyfriend comes? I said, oh, it's okay, Bob. Bob, Bob, you serenaded her, bro. You protected her. You even protected Judy, bro. You was getting brownie points throughout this freaking movie. I don't care what nobody say. You was out there earning your brownie points, bro. Um, but also, we see that uh, even the book, the guy that uh, Daniela's brother, Anthony, we see that he starts to appreciate Judy. Despite him being mean and cold, I mean, losing a loved one is hard. I mean, especially your parent. You know what I'm saying? He lost his father. So you start to see that he, he apologized to Judy and everything for the cruel things he said. So to me, Annabelle 3 was solid. I didn't really like Annabelle 1, but 2 and 3 were probably the most solid films. I mean, I give it a 4 out of 5. That's how I feel about the movie. It wasn't the best horror movie, but it, it delivered. It signed, still <laughs> delivered, okay? But guys, you tell me in the comments, what did you feel about Annabelle 3 Comes Home? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you disagree with it? Tell me in the comments. I'm out, guys.